Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayami. Mesech HaSavet the Zara Daf Chav Zayin. We begin 17 lines off the top of the Amin and back to the, the question of who? Who can perform a bris on a Yisrael? According to some shittos, and uh, that's actually how we uh, pass it in the Shulchan Aruch, a, a guy in Oivet Kechavim is not qualified to perform a bris In fact, if the uh, bris was done by a guy, According to some shittos, um, we have to actually fix it, uh, sort of by doing hatofas dambris, pricking and getting a little dam out. Uh, and if that's done by the Yisrael, that sort of fixes the bris milah and makes it kosher. And the question is why? How do we know that a guy is not qualified to do a bris milah? Itmar, we have learned as follows. Minayin, lamila, ba'ibet, kachavim, sheep, sula. How do we know? that a guy is not qualified to perform a bris mila. So we have Daru Bar Papa, interestingly, he's mentioned you know, at the uh, Siyam ceremony at the end of the Mesechta, he's one of the, uh, one of uh, Rav Papa's son, Daru Bar Papa, here we have Halacha in his name. So he quotes Rav, Daru Bar Papa, Mishmei the Rav Omar, well that's the Pasuk that we uh, referred to yesterday. Hashem tells Avram Avinu, you and your Zaracha, your descendants, will um, adhere to the uh, bris, va'ato es brisi sishmar, which means to say that not only um, will they have a bris done upon themselves, rather, in terms of who's going to perform the bris as well, you are the caretakers of this uh, performance. So go is not qualified. Rabbi Yechanan Omar, there's a girsa of Rabbi Yechanan Omar. There's another pasuk to teach us that only a Yisrael, only one who who has a bris on himself, can actually perform a bris on others. Himoil yimoil, right? That's the Pasuk. Himoil yimoil kozachar. Rashi says, we learn it as though it would say, Hamol, only one who has a mila upon himself, yimoil can now turn around and do the same to others. As opposed to a guy who doesn't have a bris mila himself. Now, my binayu, any difference whether... The halacha is sourced from the pasuk of Atos Brisi Sishmar or the pasuk of Hamalimoil. Says the Gemara, yeah. Let's say you have a guy who had who had a bris mila done to himself. Aravi mahul, an Arab who's mahul. They give noini mahul. Rashi says give noini is a uma mula, some some nation. Some learn these are the descendants of Keturah of Hagar of Ramavino's wife. So they carry down this tradition um, of bris mila as their uh, Grandfather Yishmael had. So the fellow has a brasmila on himself, but he's not a Yisrael. That's going to be the difference between the two approaches. Ikibinai. Man do Amar Hamal Yimoil. Himal Yimoil. If you work with that Pasik. So Yaika works in this case because factually he has a bris. So he's qualified. However, Uman do Amar species Shishmar, if it's based on the other Pasik. Only those that are actually part of this, you know, Avram Avinu's covenant. That's specific to him and his descendants. Leka, so it doesn't apply to an Aravi Mahul or Givinayini Mahul. Asks the Gemara, hold it. Well, you know, even the first concept wouldn't apply. Even to consider this fellow a, 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 a fellow with a Mila is incorrect. Because Mila is more than just the, you know, the physical phenomenon. It has much, you know, more profound and, and deeper significance than just the physical removal of the skin, right? The Farsh will explain that Mila affects the person's heart. There is Arlas Halev that has to be removed, right? Those encasings that hide the person's purity. So Mila is to uncover a person's uh, true essence, his purity. That, uh, that's specific to Yisraelim who uh, were given this opportunity to cleanse themselves, to rid themselves of uh, these encasings and these blockages. In any case, uh, a true mohul is only a Yisrael. Right? Ulamanda Omar, himal yimal. Even if we work with that concept, Ika, are you going to say that it applies to a, a guy who had a bris mila? We have a Mishnah back in a Durham. The person swears off any uh, connection. He makes a koinam. Koinam is a lotion of carbon, like Hegdish. Right? 
I can't partake in any benefit from you. And he specifies, I'm going to keep away from who? All those that are considered arelim. Those with arla, non-circumcised. So what if there's a yid who happens to be an arel? Okay, let's say uh, he's uh, from a hemophiliac you know, family, he can't do brismila, right? So in terms of the, the physical component, uh, he technically is an arel. Nevertheless, says the Mishnah, he's not included in the Isser. Mutar ba'arli Yisrael. This fellow can partake, can interact with Yisraelim who happen to be Arelim. And interestingly, he can't partake, he can't have a no from any goyim, <coughs> even if the guy happened to have a bris milah. Why? Because he swore off any association with Arelim, and a guy, no matter what, is classified as an Arel. Right, so the, the physical Mila doesn't really have that profound effect. He's not called anything other than an Earl. Okay, Amma, so what do we see? Alpha Gav de Mahili. So even though this guy happens to have that physical Mila done to him, Commander Mahili Dummy. It's as though he doesn't have the Mila. He's unaffected by the bris. He's not labeled as a Mohul. That's the case, then he doesn't qualify for Himal Yimal. He's not a Mohul, he's not a person. With a, a, a bris milah. So this can't be the difference between the two uh, approaches. Basically what we're saying is that a guy is always an Ural, a Yisrael is always one who has bris milah in terms of his classification, in terms of his labeling. So in which case you can't say that a guy with a bris milah can go ahead and perform the same on a Yisrael. El or rather, you the difference will be like this. Yisrael, what if it's a Yid? Who due to circumstance could not do a bris milah. Yisrael Shemesu, for example, his brothers had passed away through the bris. Basically, it's been established that his family has an issue with blood clotting, hemophiliac, and Shemesu Ech of Machmas Mila, and therefore, no milah was performed on this particular person. So he's a Yid, but he's without a bris milah. Question, is he kosher to perform a bris on another Yid? So that depends on the two sources. Mandavar, Vato, Es Brisi Sishmar, we're focused on that Pasuk, Ika. It applies to him as well. He's covered by this covenant. He's bound by this bris. The fact that he, he was prevented by circumstance from doing the actual bris doesn't, in any way, diminish his connection to the bris. It's as though he did the bris in terms of, you know, the way Hashem and the Torah looks at him. Right? That's enough. He tried. He wants to. Right? He's connected to the bris. Just uh, right. So you have that. Ilmad Omar, himol yimol leka. But if it's based on the pasuk himol yimol, he needs to have that physical uh, mila on himself, and this fellow doesn't have it. And therefore, he's not qualified to perform a bris. Asks the Gemara, no. Once again, he's still labeled as one with a bris mila. He's considered as though he had a mila done. He's not lacking a mila. He's not an arel. He does what he could. And then uh, it's counted as though he's a bris. he had a bris. Lumanda Omar, himal yimal. Even if you go with the other approach of himal yimal, which requires... The, the male to have a bris upon himself, leka. So it's lacking in this case. But now we have that same Mishnah in Masechus Natar. I'm keeping away from all those with a bris. Osir ba'arli Yisrael. He cannot interact with Yisraelim, who happen to be Arelim. So even though the fellow is an Aral, he's labeled as a mul. Because Israel, by definition, is a mohol. Umutar b'mule abkichavim. On the other hand, he cannot benefit from the goyim who happen to have a bris. Alma, what do we see from here? Afagav l'mehili, k'man d'mehili dami. So even though he's in a situation where he personally did not have a bris, 
But in terms of status, in terms of category, command the Mihilu Domu. He's covered under the banner of a Mohul. So in any case, he can perform a bris. So let's uh, veer away from these uh, cases because they're not really going to uh, provide the, the nafkamina. Ella, so we're still looking for a case, a situation where it, it, you know, it would depend. The person's qualification would depend on whether we look at the Pasuk of Ato as Brisi Sishmar or Himal Yimal, which we learn Hamal Yimal. Eli Gvinay Isha, a woman. Can she do a bris on a boy? Lamanda Amar Vata as Brisi Sishmar, if it's based on that Pasuk, Leka. She doesn't qualify because she's not connected to the, the, the concept of bris milah. The Isha Lav Bas Milhi, right? She's not a part of that equation. So she's not certified to perform a bris. However, Lamanda Amar, Himal Yimal, according to that Pasuk, so, an RL can't do a bris, but she's not an RL. She's not lacking the bris experience, right? She certainly qualifies. Why the Isha? Because a woman commanded me Ladamia. And logically, it's considered as though she had a bris milah. I mean, she say that, you know, all the positive effects of a bris. She's not lacking that. She doesn't have these... Uh, the need to have that physical bris. So for all practical purposes, she, she, she has the positive effects of a bris meal even without undergoing the experience. So she would be kosher to make a bris. Perhaps it's referring to the panemius, the internals, meaning the, you know, the purity that comes along with the bris. She has it, naturally. Okay, says the more really, umikil mando omar, Isha Lai? How could you even suggest that according to some opinion, an Isha is not qualified? We have a Pasuk in the Torah. Tzipayra, Isha's Moshe, right? When her husband Moshe Rabbeinu was being threatened by the snake, and she realized, she observed and concluded that it must be related to the delay that happened with the um, circumc- circumcision of their son, Eliezer. She quickly sees the opportunity and she grabbed a, uh, a sharp uh, stone, and she did a bris milah on her son. Apparently she's qualified. Answers the Gemara, vatakach. instead of vatikach, we'll read it as though it's vatakach, she had somebody else do it for her. Who's that somebody else who's qualified? So some say maybe it was the other son, Gershon, who was uh, considered you know, a yid or whatever, right? Um, in any case, it wasn't the Isha doing it. Voksiv. We have the next uh, part of the Pasuk, Vatichrois, she uh, removed the skin. Korebe Vatachrois, she had somebody else do it. The Amrul Inish, she asked another man, Achrina Vaava, and he did it. Vivais Ema, another way to explain it. Asiva Aschala, although she began the process of, of removing the Arla, but she did not complete the process. Rather, Vaasa Moshe, Vagmar Moshe, recovered from his. Um, and the snake will, you know. Detached it, let go, and he was able to turn around and and, and complete the process. So ultimately, it was Meshur Benu doing the bris milah. Okay, so in some in summation, we're learning that a guy cannot perform a bris milah on Israel, either based on the pasuk of Atos bris Sishmo or a, the pasuk of Himal Yimal, which we learned to mean Hamoil. Only one who had a bris milah upon himself, Yimal, can provide those for that for others. Um, the Nafkamina would be the Isha. The question from Tzipira was resolved. Interestingly, the uh, Farsham asked, well, back, back uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had the story of um, Ketir Bar Sholem. That was the Roman uh, officer who, um, who advocated for the Jews. Ultimately, he was sentenced to death and he was Megayer and he did a quick bris milah on the way. He did it upon himself. He uh, dropped down and he removed his earl. And the question, the obvious question is, well, at that point, he was still a guy, and we learned that a guy is not kasha for bris milah. So the Paris Yosef explains, he says, it happened simultaneously, because that, it became a yid through that process. And he was quickly misguided. some say he did the tefillah earlier, so that completed the, the conversion process, which turned him into a yid. So, retroactively, so to speak, or simultaneously, it is considered as though the bris was performed by a yid, which the bris made him into a yid, Right? So it's considered, it qualifies as a bris done by interesting terrorists to that kasha.
Continues the uh, the Mishnah. Misrapid mehen ripoi momen. So you can avail yourself to a, a guy healer if it's limited to momen. It's, it's it's your possession. Your, your it's a monetary type of thing. Avalei but not if it pertains to your body. Don't uh, avail yourself on a personal level to the guyish uh, services um, for concerns of safety. One cannot uh, allow himself to be uh, uh, to uh, to. Uh, to frequent a, a barber, a Gaisha barber, get a haircut from him, Bechal Makim, any place, Rashi says. Even the even the streets near the uh, you know the main Rishas Rabbim, you have passerby all the time, there's a concern that he might actually slash him with his uh, you know equipment. David Ramir was very concerned about um, these things, as we learned the last couple of days. Even when it's you know in full public view, there's always a concern that he might you know slide his hand and imperil his customer. They say, look, in private there's a, a concern, but if it's out in the public mutter, then it's okay because that serves as a deterrent and ensures the customer's safety. but certainly not if it's in private. Now, what does the Mishnah mean? My which is allowed to be accepted from a goy, you might open a fashion, which you don't. Uh, take from a guy. What does that mean? Ilema. Shall we say ripu imamin bizchar? That if uh, the guy is getting paid for his, uh, the doctor is getting paid for his services, then he wouldn't play games, uh, lest he jeopardize his uh, his fee. So you can trust uh, that he's going to do a good job and heal the uh, patient. Ripu nefashes, which the mission says is not allowed. That's bechina when he's doing it, you know, on a volunteer basis. So he has no uh, deterrent, and he might. Engage in foul play. Is that the mission? Does that uh, is that what the mission means? Uh, why doesn't the mission just say it outright? Listening, the mission should say it very simply. You can avail yourself to their medical uh, services if it's for pay, but not for free. Ella, rather, you're right. Ripui mamen means davashi ein sakana. So if it's just uh, some sort of uh, ailment or you know some sort of uh, condition that's not life threatening. So at most, it can cost the patient money, meaning if the, uh, if the Gaisha doctor exacerbates the situation, he's going to have to spend more money and uh, get more involved in uh, you know, more, more remedies, more medicines, uh, the patient will. It's going to cost them money. So in that case, since it's not a life-threatening thing, there's no concern about uh, you know, uh, the guy killing him. Right? At most, it's going to cost them some money. So that's okay. Uh, but Ripu Nefashis means... You can't avail yourself to the, avail yourself to the uh, Geisha doctor's services if we're dealing with you know a, a critical uh, situation, a critical illness, something which is Yesh Sakana, where uh, you know the Geisha Hashem can mip, manipulate it and make it worse and actually ca- causes death. So is that the uh, distinction in the Mishnah between uh, you know critical or not critical? So basically, you can trust him. If it doesn't involve a critical procedure, Vam Rav Yudah, Rav Yudah tells us, keep far away. Never trust a, a, a doctor who is over there with the Zara. I feel the the consult. I wouldn't even go to him for, uh, for some uh, bandaging. Loi Matzinim and I wouldn't, uh, we're not meant to accept from them, Rashi explains. Rivda the Kusilta is uh, some sort of um, blood drawing procedure. He's a uh, Hakazas Adam, that they would do occasionally to lighten the blood load. In any case, if there's some sort of uh, complication, some sort of wound resulting from that procedure, I wouldn't even go to a guy to heal a, 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 to heal that to heal the type of you know superficial skin wound. Because you're not allowed to take your chance with a guy. You never know what's going to happen. So apparently, the Mishnah is not allowing us to do that. Ella, so rather, what is the Mishnah? Yes, allowing. Ripui mummy is You can go to a veterinarian. To uh, treat the uh, the animal. So if it's your possession only, your animal, etc., then you can go to a guy and take your chances. But not if it pertains to your own self, to your body. Regarding any, irrespective of the of the ailment or condition. Ripa nefashis means kufei's own body. Vahainu, and this is consistent with Rabbi Yudah. Dom Rabbi Yudah, I feel Rabbi Yudah, because still even a slight treatment, loy matzini menai, we don't accept from them. Omar v'chizda, Omar v'chizda. So although we don't avail ourselves to an actual 
um, medical procedure, Aval, but to uh, seek his advice. Look, uh, my dear doctor, well, what do you uh, suggest for this and this uh, condition? Right? Aval, I'm all over. If the doctor gives him uh, some personal advice, some pliny, this medicine, the Afaloi, could be beneficial for this condition. Some pliny, rally, the other, uh, some is uh, detrimental for this, uh, right? Mutter, then you can listen to him, you can accept it. Why? Because the guy knows, you know, you're not really relying on him. You're just uh, sort of testing him. The fact is, you're not going to, uh, uh, you're not coming to him as a patient, right? You're just uh, sort of uh, questioning his knowledge and sort of challenging him, right? You're testing the waters. Savar, the guy is figuring, Shiyulu Mashallah. He's just merely asking him. And he's going to go to the next guy for another opinion, right? So I better not uh, lead him off, lest I um, ruin my uh, professional reputation, right? Just like he's asking him, Marshall in Shachrin, he's going to be asking another doctor as well in Shachrin of Asa Gavra, and the first doctor, if he uh, misleads him, will uh, come to ruin his uh, his career. So we can rely on him if it's merely, you know, a, a, a consultation. Here's a big chiddush. So we don't. Uh, avail ourselves to this type of treatment from a guy lest he endanger his life further. So if it's suffix chai suffix meis, if a yid is in a very critical situation, 50-50, that he will survive. We're not sure if he's going to survive or not. Still, ain't misrabbin mehem. Uh, you can't go to the guy. For a four. Why? It says Rashi on the fourth line. You know why? Because this is a certainty. This is a vada. Here, there's a chance he might survive. Going to the guy, says Rashi, David Kicham, Vade Katale. He's presumed to be, he's presumed to, 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 uh, be a Ritzayach. Right? So it's assumed that he's going to kill him, Vade Katale. Umutav Shianiach. So, so prefer, prefer to leave the year alone, leave the patient alone, even though there's a, Strong chance he might die. Because he might uh, survive. So don't uh, place him in the hands of a guy which is considered vada katele, certainly putting him in sakon. But that's only when there is a, a chance that the Yid will survive otherwise. Right? But if he's vada mes, if the Yid is critically ill, so with, without any intervention, he's certainly dying soon. So now the question is, should we take our chances and avail ourselves to this uh, Goyish doctor? By the way, when we speak about Goyish doctors, we had the word yesterday that a mumcha is different, right? A roif a mumcha, professional, who needs to uphold his reputation, he's not going to engage in foul play. It's not worth it for him, right? To kill a yid and then ruin his career and be sued uh, for malpractice, Right? So we're speaking about, you know, an unofficial healer, not a certified mumcha. In any case, there's a chashash of sakonas nefash. The question is, should we or should we not? He's vade mace. Otherwise, without intervention, the patient is slated for death. The answer is Mr. Rappen, man. Then you can take your chances with the good. Although, he might make it worse. He might kill him instantly. He won't even live the next couple of weeks, which he would have otherwise. So you're basically giving up short-term life, a chance that he might give up short-term life, might die instantly, for the chance that actually the guy might, uh, who knows, he might uh, take a liking, he might take an interest and treat him with integrity and give him a long-term survival. Right? Give him a refuah for long term. Ask the Gemara, oh, Vada Imeis Misrap and Mahen. So in this case, where he's certainly slated for death in the long term, he's going to survive a couple of weeks, but then he's certainly going to die. So we're allowed to approach the Geisha doctor for a chance that he might uh, heal him. But on the other hand, there's a very strong possibility that he's going to kill him on the spot. He's going to do something that will cause his uh, imminent death. So you're giving up 
sort of short-term life for a chance of long-term survival? Is, is that correct? Yeah, in this case when there is even a slight chance of long-term survival as a result of this procedure, even though there's perhaps a, a stronger chance that uh, the guy will engage in foul play and kill him instantly. So you're sort of forfeiting short-term for a chance of long-term. We don't reckon with short-term if it's at the expense of of long-term, the expense of a chance of long-term. Because short-term has no significance with respect to long-term life. Very interesting equation here. By the way, the uh, first, the, a lot of Paiskim, including Ramesha Feinstein, bring a right from this Gemara. Unfortunately, Loyal Lane, a person in faces this type of choice. He slated the prognosis is short term life only. He's not going to survive. But the doctors are offering to do some sort of procedure, experimental procedure, or some sort of, you know, right? Some sort of uh, exotic procedure, which which, which may affect long-term survival, may give him long-term life, but uh, at the same time comes along with, with very great risks. It might exacerbate the situation. He might die quicker than he would have otherwise. So Moshe Paskins, go for it. Based on this Gemara. Chaye Isha, relative to Chaye, you know, uh, whatever it's called, Chaye, not Chaye Oilam, but long-term life, is not reckoned with. Meaning if this procedure can um, offer him long-term survival, then that's more important. And it negates the forfeiture of Chayesha. Very interesting. How do we know? Do we have a source, you know, from history, from Tanakh? Then in fact, we don't reckon with short-term. If it's at the expense of a chance for long term. Those uh, four individuals inf- uh, um, afflicted with um, tzaras, right? Gechazi and his three uh, sons that were uh, camped outside the city when the uh, the Goyim came to attack Machna Aram, and it was a time of great famine. They were really, really desperate. They were faced with a very difficult choice. Should we stay here? We're going to die. Should we go into the city? It's a hunger. There's no food for us. Should we approach Machne Aram? Should we go to the opposing army? And perhaps, who knows? Look, they might kill us on the spot, but they might take us in and uh, host us. They chose the latter decision because it can bring long-term life, even though it was at the expense, a good chance that they're going to die instantly. Because Chayi Shah versus Chayi Olam is not... Uh, has no value. If we decide to go into town, we're going to die. So they preferred going to Machne Aram. To the guy. But you're giving up short term life. El Alav, apparently we learn, we're not concerned about short term life if there's a chance of long term survival. May comes a cash. So, um, you can avail yourself to a, a Reife Akum if there's a chance that he might heal him and provide long term survival. Meisve, lo yisav yitin odim aminim. Raisa says a person should not uh, converse, interact with meaning those who are infatuated by the Zara. Vein misrapid man. Nor can you accept medical treatment from them. Afil l'chayisho. Even. In a situation where the chayla, uh, the ill person, is certainly going to die, he only has a couple of days to live, you can't take your chances, even then, you can't take your chances with a guy, with a min. In fact, there was a story, Masa, with a, a person by the name of Ben Dama, Masa Ben Dama, who happened to be the nephew of Rabbi Shmuel, Ben Achoyes Rabbi Shmuel. She was struck by a snake, and he was deathly ill. Ba Yaakov, Ishkvar Sechanya, this fellow, this character, Yaakov Sechanya, we had him a couple of weeks ago. Back on the So he was a min. He was a yid who was drawn to the Zara. So he uh, he came to heal him. 
He was a healer. But Rabbi Poyse, he came to heal the uh, Bendama who was stricken by the snake. Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Shmuel didn't let him in. Leave him alone. The Amuli and Bendama, the, uh, the patient, turned to his uncle, Rabbi Shmuel, Achim, my brother Rabbi Shmuel, let him heal me. Let him proceed. Let me get healed from him. And I'll provide a source from the Torah that it's okay. Shumutar. That one can accept uh, treatment from, a, uh, from this fellow. Because my life is at stake. Rabbi Shmuel resisted. By the time he uh, got to finish his, uh, his uh, proof, meaning he didn't get to finish, by the time he died. So before he got a chance to finish, he passed away. Umeis, Kara Allah Rabbi Shmuel. So Rabbi Shmuel's uncle exclaimed upon him, How lucky you are that you resisted, that you did not succumb, that you did not connect with the Yemin, and then uh, refused his uh, medical treatment. Kara Allah Rabbi Shmuel, Ashrecha ben Dama, fortunate are you ben Dama, Shaguf Chatar, your pure body, Vyatsan Shmas Chabatahar, and your soul left in a state of purity. Which means to say without succumbing to something inappropriate. You were lucky that you did not violate, not transgress the Allah of your colleagues, the Isra the Rabbonon, Shu Aimrim, who would tell us, Upirates Gedar Ishkanonochash, if one breaches the um the defense that the Chachamim enacted around the Torah. So he adheres to the directives of the Chachamim, uh, in this case, uh, refusing to interact with a min, right? The person violates that, Yishchan nachash The punishment is to be attacked by a snake, so you refused, you resisted, lucky you are. Asks the Gemara. So, so uh, yeah, the question now is, well, his life was in peril, he was about to die, he was critically ill. Why couldn't he avail himself to the... Uh, the chance that uh, this character Yaakov Ishkvar Sakhani would heal him and give him a chance at long term survival, right? We just said, uh, you know, short term life has no value versus long term survival. Answers the Gemara, no, here it's very different. As Tesis explains, this uh, character Yaakov Ishkhani had an agenda. He was uh, infatuated with Abed Zara, drew on Abed Zara. Try to ensnare others to do Avi Zara, right? And he uh, used the uh, Avi Zara um, formulations, chantings, whatever. He uh, tapped into the uh, Avi Zara powers to affect his remedies. So uh, you got to keep far away from this guy. That's the difference. It's not just a plain guy. Shani Minus, a fellow engaged in Minus, the Mashka, it draws. The Asi Lemushach Basraya can draw people and snare people. To connect to this type of ideal and lifestyle. So, in this case, you gotta keep far, far away. Don't even let him through the door. Amar, Amar. So, what do we just say? That uh, Rabbi Shmuel expressed his pride. Look, you uh, resisted violating the Allah, because one who does violate makes himself susceptible to the attacking of a snake. Well, he was already attacked by a snake. Can't get worse than that. You would not be Chavya, a snake tank had already struck him, already bit him. No, we're speaking about a spiritual uh, snake. Uh, getting bit by a physical snake. Okay. It's just... Uh, it has a physical effect, but not a long-term eternal effect. Versus neg- neg- negating... The Allah is of the Chachamim, Chivi the Rabbanon, that can trigger a rabbinic snake, a spiritual effect, a spiritual detriment. The Leslie is Susa, cloud, has no remedy at all in the long term. So good for you. Yeah, it cost him as a physical life, but eternally, he lives forever. Now, uh, we just, just uh, let's try to uh, figure out what the. Uh, what, what, what did uh, Ben Dama have in mind? Have in mind? He told Rabbi Shmuel, "Look, I have a source to allow it." What might have the What uh, what pasuk? What source would he have proposed had he uh, uh, had he been given the chance to do so? The pasuk says, "V'chayvahem." Torah is given for life. 
even physical life. The words of the Torah, the mitzvahs cannot cause, and I meant to cause death. So pikuach nevesh, as we know, overrides everything, pretty much everything. So, sure, it's a problematic interaction with this uh, fellow, but um, my life's at stake. Okay, Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Shmuel disagreed. Why? It's only in private. But there's no, you know, desecration of Hashem. There's no chil Hashem element. Aval for but in public, in this case, loy. It would not be allowed. So sure, pikuach nefesh is doicha, but that's only when there's no chil Hashem element involved. The sanya, as we learned in the brayso, how do we shmol? Eimer shmol would say, menayim shem eimer le adam. How do we know that if they propose to a person, avoid avoid skilchaf? Look, you have a choice: either worship an idol, va'al taharik, and your life will be spared. Otherwise, you'll be killed by us. What is he meant to do? He should uh, be over with the zora rather than uh, get himself killed. How do we know? Right? This very same Pasuk. Mitzvahs are meant to impart life, not the opposite. What about in public? Oh, no. In a situation where it generates Chil Hashem, Rashi says, if it's outside, people see, they learn from him. To negate the words of the Torah. And empowers the powers of, of, of Tumah, of, of, of Aveira, of Itzahara, of, of, of Avedazara. Right? So in that case, one is meant to resist under all circumstances, even under the threat of death, as per the story of Bendam. Interestingly, Tesis points out that um, according to Bishmol, it's all about in private or in public. Um, so the Chil Hashem element is what determines how to go about it. But the uh, Shitas Chachamim, that's how we pass, and the Shitas Chachamim is that um, there are the uh, three cardinal sins, Gil Chamuris. Amongst them, uh, you know, uh, we have the Avay Dezara, right? Gil Arayis, Avay Dezara, Shilchaz Damim, where we say Yehar Gval Yavar. Under all circumstances, a person may not engage even when he's being... Uh, Bodily threatened. Okay, so in summation, a guy doing a brismila, that's not allowed because of uh, one of two psukim, va'ata aspersis shishmar, or himal yimal, which is interpreted as hamol yimal. Now, if would be an isha, because on the one hand, she's not lacking the bris, on the other hand, she's not actively part of va'ata aspersis shishmar. Uh, you know, the arrangement regarding Yatsipoira. Either she had somebody else or Maishra Rabbeinu. One is not meant to take his chances with a, a Roifei who is a Oyvida Vedizara for safety concerns, uh, unless it's uh, strictly related to his possessions. For instance, you know, a veterinarian treating his animal. Regarding any, uh, what type of Rufua are we speaking about? So, according to the Maskan of the Gemara, even a slight. Um, you know, a superficial type of treatment is problematic, should be avoided. Um, we had an interesting chiddush that uh, this is only when it's suffic high suffic mace, when the patient you know has a good chance of survival. But otherwise, if it's vadai mace, it's certainly going to die. There's no long-term you know survival option here. So it's just a matter of taking your chances. Um, going to the guy who perhaps will provide that opportunity, will perhaps heal him, that's allowed even though it might be at the expense of the uh, you know, short-term chayisha, which we say have no value, klape, relative to chaye, uh, to, to uh, long-term life, as was highlighted in the story of Gechazi and his three sons who went to the Machni Aram to take their chances. We have the story of Ben Dama, who whose uncle Rishmoel, um did not allow him to be healed by this min, lest he uh, be drawn after Minos, keep far away, and he uh, praised him for uh, dying with Tahara, not being entangled uh, with the uh, with the min, which would uh, avail him to the Einish of Pirates Geder Yishchan Nachash, which has that permanent effect. Um, so although. Uh, there was a, a pasuk of a that could have uh, provided coverage. 
because uh, Pikuach Nefesh is Doicha, everything, but according to Bishma, it didn't apply in this case because it was in public, it was Befar Hesya. So the mitzvah of Kiddush Hashem overrides even Pikuach Nefesh. All the best to you, and that's Lachara.